Good morning. Welcome back to day two of Unleashed. Uh, really happy to be here. My name is Bernie Kassar, Chief Customer Officer at Exactly. And today I am happy to have Meredith Schmidt and Scott Henderson, both from Salesforce, with us. I'll, uh, I'll let them say hello and, and do a quick introduction here in a minute. But the objective of our session today is very much having a, a conversation about the future of revenue operations. When Meredith and Scott give a little bit of background in what they've done uh, over their course uh, of their career at Salesforce, as well as other companies, you'll quickly find that they are experts in their field. And this should be a, a fun conversation about what we what we expect to see in the future. Meredith, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, Meredith Schmidt, I have uh, been with Salesforce now, let's see, almost over 16 years. I'm currently running our revenue uh, cloud product, but really started my journey at Salesforce creating uh, the revenue operations team. Um, you know, how do we do everything we do related to revenue? and um, had the opportunity to come over and really try my hand at product and bring this to all of our customers and all the magic we do. So I'm uh, super excited to be here. Thank you. Excellent. Scott, how about you? Thanks, Bernie. Hello, everybody. Scott Henderson. I'm an executive vice president of revenue operations at Salesforce. I'm approaching my 19th year anniversary. And uh, I've been predominantly in the finance organization uh, all this time. I've been in the revenue operations team for about eight years ago. Actually, Meredith, when she was leading the group, came out to Switzerland where I was living and working and said, hey, how about if you come back and uh, run the sales compensation organization within RevOps? And so I said, yeah, let's do it. And so uh, here I am a few years later leading this uh, great organization where Meredith uh, really you know, set up the framework of the organization and the success that we have today. Well, I feel like a pup. I've only been at exactly 14 years uh, <laughs> compared to uh, to, go, to both of your tenure. And I had the pleasure of meeting Meredith uh, probably about eight and a half years ago when uh, she was trying to recruit you over, Scott. It was uh, at a dream force, believe it or not. Uh, I think Sam Chung was turning over the reins to her and it was, it's been a, been a wonderful relationship since for both of you. I consider you colleagues um, customers, partners, but most importantly, friends. So it's been a, it's been a fun ride so far. So let's jump into it. I think uh, a lot of you know, uh, if you're in the audience as a customer or a, a future customer, what exactly really does. We were born in, uh, instead of compensation management, but over the years, we've been able to expand our portfolio and there's the big buzz the, the last few years about revenue operations. What does that really mean? And so with, with that lens, I'd love to, to have both of you talk, about, talk a little bit about what you're seeing. Meredith, from your point of view, what are your customers asking for? What are you seeing with the, the delivery of your solutions? And then, Scott, when you, uh, when you approach this question, and we can go back and forth. This doesn't have to be. Um, serial by any means. What are you seeing in your role? Uh, Salesforce has had phenomenal growth over the years, and I only expect to see that growth uh, moving forward. So how do you set up your organization to be able to scale to manage this, this whole new concept? Meredith, do we want to start with you? Sure. Just, hey, what are you seeing out there? What are you, what are you thinking? What is Revenue Cloud? Um, sure. First of all, <laughs> there's a lot of people, it's, it's newly coined. Yeah, you know, um, it's, it's such an exciting space. And when you think about every company out there, really, we love customer 360 and customers are at the center of everything we do at Salesforce. But I also tell you revenue is at the center, right? Whether you're marketing to a customer to bring in a lead, selling to a customer or supporting a customer, really, it's about bringing that dollar of revenue in and keeping that dollar revenue. And how do you really optimize that? And so, you know, I really do think, you know, Again, I always say customer first, but I think revenue comes to to the center too. And um, there's just been a disparate there's there's a disparate number of tools out there. How do you kind of piece it together? And you know, over the years at Salesforce, we really built out revenue operations uh, on our platform. I actually called it Revenue Cloud many many years ago, and it really began the journey for Salesforce on the product side began when we we acquired a CPQ company. 
Um, who had originally acquired billing. So we kind of looked at CPQ and billing, but we really looked at this as this is more than CPQ and billing. When you think about revenue operations, revenue starts the day you create a product, right? How do you set up your product? Who can sell the product? What are the rules around a product? And then you've got to sell a product, right? That's where CPQ comes in, really. You know, I got to create quotes and, and support my sales team. Um, and ultimately, I got to pay commissions on it, right? And so you really, really thought about this life cycle of, of a customer and a dollar of revenue, right? And where does that start? And and I think a lot of it in the the history that we've had together and how we thought about it is really it's a and I get so geeky on this, but I love it. It's really a, an amazing data model, right? Like how do you capture that data and tell it what to do? And that's really the the idea of where we're going with Revenue Cloud is having the data work for you and having the data talk to you, right? Yeah. And so I think about data intelligence. Um, is so pervasive right now, but really, how do you capture that intelligence? How do you do better deals? How do you, you know, optimize your price and really make it simple for your your sales team? And you know, I think the other big thing is it's not just about sales teams anymore. When you think about revenue, right? It's really omni-channel, and that's the big thing we're hearing right now, especially over the last 12, 13, 14 months. Right? Um, we have many buyers everywhere. Right, you're not always being sold to. You want to you want to be able to buy yourself. You see, you've seen the incredible success in commerce, you know, e-commerce right now, um, as well as partners. So we think about, you know, sales teams, direct sales teams, um, you know, self-service as well as you know our partner ecosystem, and just really meeting the customer on how they want to buy and where they want to buy. And so, really, Revenue Cloud as a product is bringing us all together, where the the experience is so easy, and all of the complication is really. Um, we, we've really fixed that fixed that for you. We're giving you, we're, we're looking to give you really out of box automation, right? How do I actually tell, tell you, here's how you can do what, what you need to do. How you, here's how you bring all the pieces together. So it's more than just little bits of, of product. It's really about a process and how do we help you automate process? No, that's great. I, I like what you call the data intelligence. Uh, I believe you use that, those two words. Is, uh, am I quoting you correctly? Putting me correctly. I love data. Yes. Well, we're uh, as we expand uh, our offering from exactly starting, as I mentioned, with incentive compensation management, it's all about driving behavior. And it, it's when we as we expand, we're start, starting to move into this intelligent revenue platform. And we can talk about intelligent revenue here in a minute. But I think it ties directly to what you're talking about, Meredith, is being able to understand what your revenue flow is. And is it good revenue or bad revenue? You can have two deals, for example, that are both worth 100K. But when you start peeling back the onion, and, and Scott, I'll look to you here in a minute because you're actually dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis, is, is this deal the same? You have a 100K deal. It's a three-year deal. If you have price increases every year on that deal, um, what is the product mix? There's so many different things than just a 100K deal that you can drive the behavior um, through comp uh, and then and also just the way you set up the quoting system. So starting all the way back from the beginning where, where you're picking the products, picking the pricing, picking the bundle, all that fun stuff, all the way through through compensating. So Scott, what are you seeing in your world when it comes to, uh, to revenue ops? Well, uh, you know, revenue operations is probably a, a, a term that Meredith should have trademarked. Uh, <laughs> But uh, so, you know, there, it's been an evolution. Like when I started with the company and when Meredith joined, uh, Re RevOps was really just a team supporting deals, doing commissions and collecting dollars. Uh, a, a, as she thought about it, uh, it expanded. And it, it's really about product because product, by having the product on our platform, we've been able to automate close to 90% of our business processes. And so what does that automation mean? That means automated revenue recognition, provisioning, billing, crediting for the deal and incentive compensation. So that's been really a big game changer for us. So when I talk to customers, when I talk to our executives, I say revenue operations, if you have a product, we support it. Any dollar, every dollar of revenue flows through our team and every dollar of compensation flows through our team. So we're sort of the uh, glue that kind of keeps the front office together with the back office. And, and really, you know, as we look towards the future, a lot of it, a lot of the focus in our uh, organization has, has always been on automation. 
but it's really about driving that automation to a higher level to reduce risk for the company. And that's really where my head's at these days. How, how do you have your organization set up? So for people out there that are just starting to look at this whole concept of revenue operations, they probably have teams and sales ops. They have, they have these loose departments that obviously support the business today that they're in. But to be more efficient is what really the, the goal is here with, with the whole revenue ops uh, revolution, we'll call it. Um, how do you have your team set up to, to be able to provide that? And I, I should probably note that Salesforce uh, has been a customer for a long time and a partner for a long time. We actually launched exactly back in 2005 at Dreamforce. So you've been core to, uh, to our success and it's been great to, to be working together. Um, but Scott, with, with regards to your teams, how, how do you see that, uh, that being organized today? And how can you help people out there that are looking to organize a, a revenue ops team? Yeah, that, that's a question that, that I answer quite a bit. And I think it's different in many companies. Mm -hmm. The way that we think about it, again, is we organize ourselves around the product. So we have a product uh, operations organization. We also have a quote to cash organization, and, and that's the organization that we work very closely with Meredith um, in terms of the revenue cloud. We also have a deal support organization, what we call sales operations, and that's really a direct and indirect uh, support. And then we have an incentive compensation organization all the way from design to administration. And then we've got a few pockets of uh, other pieces, but those are the core elements of our organization. Um, because we're a publicly traded company, SOCs and compliance is you know number one in everything that we support and think about. And so that's really ingrained in our in our systems and processes. So we have a, a relatively large, not large. We have we have a, a SOX team in our organ implanted into our organization to ensure that we're always compliant and always doing things uh, the right way. Um, so that's that's pretty much the gist of it, Bernie. Yeah. yeah. I always like to say all roads lead to revenue operations, right? To get anything done at this company, and you see it time and time again. It's not, you know, at Salesforce in particular, but I think, you know, as people are building out these teams, right, it's not, it, it is about controls, but it's also a, about, you know, who can see the full landscape of the business and finance is in a really interesting position to see that. Right. And I think, you know, with M and a, right. How are we going to change business models to do we, do we change business models? How do we absorb change? Um, but, you know, from marketing even, Hey, I want to do a promo, right. Promos come through the product team. Right. And so you start thinking about how you see so much of the business and how it all culminates back into that dollar of revenue, frankly. And so, um, I think that the span, the, the, there's the purview into the business that revenue ops brings and the insights that you bring, not only to the CFO, right, but to the COO, to the CEO, right? You're, you're really touching all, all aspects of the company. Yeah. No, it, it's, uh, it's interesting how the customer is always at the heart of it when, for any business, and that's how business gets done and how you pay the bills. But then it's really breaking down the revenue that you're getting, and that's how you break down your growth and your uh, strategy of, of how you're going to grow the business is really understanding where that revenue is coming from and how you treat it and move it, uh, move it through the, the actual process. Meredith, what are some of your customers when you start looking at revenue cloud and looking at the pieces that you deliver and the question on everybody's mind when you're doing billing, when are you going to accept Bitcoin as part of your <laughs> platform? <laughs> um. <laughs> TBD, TBD. Yeah. Does that come up at all? Actually, I'll joke. Not myself. yet. Actually, yeah. not yet. Um, I on the roadmap. Yeah, on very the future roadmap. No, um, no, it has not come yet yet. But I'm I'm surprised actually it hasn't. I'm sure it hasn't. Some yeah. conversation I have not been in, but not to my level. Well, with Salesforce being the company they are out in the in the tech space, my guess is before you accept Bitcoin, you, your treasury might make an investment in Bitcoin. <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm just kidding. <laughs> with regards to um, with regards to just the revenue cloud itself, as as we go through and we look at our ecosystem, there's certain things that we at exactly believe we should be providing our customers as solutions. We just recently um, acquired a company by the name of TopOps to go into forecasting 
And I think the nice part that balances and, and complements um, Salesforce's forecasting capabilities is really moving into being able to not only forecast your top line revenue, but also being able to forecast your commission expense. And it's such a big exposure for a lot of companies to understand how the quarter, especially public companies, how the quarter is coming together and then to figure out what are you, not only what is your forecast going to be for your top line, but how does that uh, outlook look for the expense part of it? Um, as we look at you know forecasting and, and how our two companies provide solutions there, uh, do you see anything changing on your front uh, when, when it comes to forecasting? It's, it's closely tied to revenue operations uh, just as, because it's part of getting the business done, but wondering what your thoughts are around that. Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, one, I, it, Revenue cloud, um, you know, does fit with all of our clouds. But I think one of the, the things that revenue cloud also needs is, is amazing partners, right? And so we think about incentive comp is one of the, the biggest pieces that, that we think actually fills out our footprint, right? And so it is something that we love partnering with exactly on to bring exactly into a lot of our deals. And yeah. it's exactly that. It's, it's becoming more than just a revenue forecast. It's that expense forecast. And you kind of mentioned it too, right? When I'm when I'm doing deals, believe me, what I'm going to get paid as an AE is very motivational, right? So being yeah. able to bring that to the forefront when you're actually negotiating deals and not after it happens, and so it's not just a forecasting of a, of expense, but from a, a seller's perspective, it's forecasting what I'm going to get paid. So there's yeah. there's that motivation factor there too, and you know I think you, you know this the we have to have this, this quote to opportunity sink. And I think it's a really interesting thing. We've talked about this before. Really, the sales organization owns the sales forecast, right? But as soon as I close a deal, that becomes a finance number, right? Because that is actually how we do all of our revenue guidance, right? All of everything, everything we do is about that revenue forecast. What's the actual, right? Yeah. And so that's, that's where RevOps does play an interesting role as well, is the validator of that revenue. Right of that forecast, um, it's no longer so. Yeah, it really transitions from kind of sales ownership to finance ownership as how we run the company is yeah. is all about the opportunity. And I think you know we all have to, as public companies or as private companies, getting funding or whatnot. Like, what is your future revenue? What's your unearned revenue? These are all really key metrics that you want to have controls over, and you want to have you know systems that do it for you. Yeah. Now, as we expand to this revenue intelligence platform uh, that we're talking about here at Exactly, and, and you mentioned the intelligent data, especially in this uh, day and age with COVID and people working remotely and probably changing the landscape of how people work moving into the future, used to be that heads of sales, uh, a lot of their forecast was gut feel. And, and it's talking to their reps. It's actually going out visiting customers. As we do less and less of that, we have to rely on the data that we we have in front of us. And that's one of the goals that both of our companies are, are trying to do, which is really keep, you still need some gut feel. This is obviously that, um, that's why you're in that job, but it's eliminating that as much as possible, especially in this environment that we can see advances with, with how you forecast not only your revenue, but your expenses. Um, Scott, I don't know how that plays into your world. I think it's um, uh, it's dead center with regards to making sure you understand what the what the exposure is as it goes through uh, through the process. Yeah, I mean, as Meredith mentioned before, all roads lead through Re RevOps, and 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 you know this is certainly the case here because. Uh, we have to establish policies, whether they be comp policies or how we're actually going to credit deals. So the sales organizations know how to forecast and ensure that, you know, what they're forecasting, they're actually getting credit on. But we also have to assess, you know, whether the deals are good deals yeah. for us. So we get involved in many ways like that as well. Um, you know, you bring up commissions and, and uh, you know, that was the role that, you know, where I started in revenue operations. And and we came up with this term earned commissions as a percentage of bookings or ACV. And this has really been a, a metric, I think, that has driven our uh, sales incentive program to a new level and helped us really understand 
uh, one of the key drivers within our business that makes that yeah. number down and how to influence that. So sure. this is what we look at on a monthly basis. You know, we, we use our comp close process, much like a controllership would use an accounting close uh, process. We let, we do variance analysis to look at what's up or down, misses we might have. So we can, uh, you know, react in real time. And so that react in real time could be, well, look, we might need to run a spiff this quarter or something like that. So uh, again, you know, as Meredith mentioned, it's data. We have a lot of data. Be it, being able to synthesize that in a way to, you know, provide those insights for us to make business decisions in real time is very, very key. Excellent. So, with the mention of COVID, let's have a little bit of fun. Uh, what do you guys been wa- binge watching these days? Uh, it's been a while since I've uh, been able to see you guys in real life. Uh, what does that what does that world look like if you're on Netflix or whatever you're watching these days? I, uh, Go ahead, Scott. And because I have a feeling you might have more of an interesting answer than oh. I have. <laughs> uh, I have not I have two kids that are like 10 years old, thereabouts. So I have, and before that I was living in Europe. So I haven't really watched any TV for a long, long time. So if I watch TV, it's sports. But the yep. one that I do record is Saturday Night Live. That's still uh, all these years. Funny, that's also on our DVR. I still call it a TiVo. And I finally realized it's not a TiVo anymore. Uh, <laughs> but I, with a two-year-old, I watch a lot of Coco Melon, which is okay. unfortunately something I wish I never found or he found. Yeah. I did find um, Trash Truck, which is actually my favorite child show now on Netflix, but um, late to the game, but we just started two nights ago, Schitt's Creek. So I am super excited to get started in that. Um, And my guilty pleasure, Below Deck. If you haven't watched Below Deck, it is hands down the best reality show ever made. It's like two in one. Well, I'm a little bit like Scott. I've been going old school. I've been watching a lot of Seinfeld, believe it or not, which is one of my favorite shows. Watch a lot of sports. Um, I haven't watched a lot of Saturday Night Live, but it's still one of my favorites when I do, um, when I am able to, to watch that. But that I like, uh, I'm going to, I've seen a couple of like minutes of Below Deck when I'm just surfing, uh, surfing along, but it sounds like it's good stuff. Stop. Start, there's like 10 episodes or 10 seasons. You got to start from the beginning. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a nice little break in the action. As we go back to, uh, Revenue Cloud, um, I wanted to talk to you, Meredith, specifically when you're seeing, when you're talking to customers or prospects, what area, what area are they looking to attack first? And do you have any advice for folks that are out there if, uh, if they're in the process of automating some of these, uh, um, some of these things, where where would you look? You know, it's interesting. I, I, I see it from two different angles. Um, a lot of it is a companies who are moving to subscription businesses. Mm -hmm. Um, moving to e-commerce and they're coming and looking for solutions, right? This is, I used to sell hardware or I used to sell software. I really want to do subscription. And really that, that evolution to subscription, they're looking for advice, right? What are the tools to do it? What are the metrics you track, frankly? And how can I automate it? How, how do I run a subscription business and what are the best practices there? Um, and that, that's one thing that comes up a lot too is my, or my product catalogs getting really complicated. I'm no longer selling three products. I'm selling a hundred products. How do I actually manage that? So those are kind of two front doors I see. Um, the third one is billing actually. And billing, you know, we have a billing offering now and I'll tell you it's on fire. Like it's subscription billing. It's, um, you know, the automation of that. And so I think those are kind of the two problems that kind of come in the door is I'm moving to subscription and I'm, my billing is getting really, I'm doing it on spreadsheets or I'm doing it in Excel and I'm trying to, um, you know, which, uh, how do I integrate it with my revenue systems, my rev rec tools, right? There's a lot of stuff coming up like that where yeah. you're seeing, seeing such growth right now um, in volumes of transactions. And, and I think that's it too, is when the, when the volumes of transactions really start to hit, you're like, okay, I've got to find some technology to help me. And I, so I think it's really growth and it's a lot of growth mindset customers who are coming to us saying, how do I grow and how do I, how do I grow at scale? Yeah. Uh, and how do I get, and it's, it come back to the optimization. You, you mentioned optimization too. It's like, 
we feel like a lot of customers are coming to us. I think I'm losing revenue, but I don't know. How do I know I'm doing good deals? It comes back to that, that concept of good deals and, and revenue optimization, revenue optimization or pricing optimization. Yeah. Um, and those are the needs I see coming in is, is I, I really want to grow. And am I growing the right way? Yeah. Scott, what are you seeing as you scale? Like if there's one area that you have to put all your energy behind because you know, this is going to be a big deal if you don't attack it now, uh, is there a certain, uh, a certain trend you're seeing that, that has you, um, awake at night? Uh, yeah. Um, so as, as Meredith said, I would say probably 90% of the discussions that I have with, you know, customers or, you know, uh, other, other companies is moving from on-prem, uh, to subscription. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, now you t there's this concept of pay as you go, right? Yeah. Years. And so, you know, these companies are now challenged where they're on-prem, they want to get to subscription and then they also want to get to pay as you go. So they're in like three different areas. So, you know, that, that, that is something that we, you know, speak about quite a bit, but, you know, for, for, for my organization, what, what keeps me up at night is again, I, it is all the different initiatives going uh, on within our company all flow through our team. And so, because anything that hits revenue product or, or a salesperson flows through us. And so, uh, everybody's got their own initiatives and they're, they're all coming to us. So for me, it's about scaling our organization to be able to support uh, the, the company the way that the company wants us. It's not only about supporting deals and commissioning, yeah. it's supporting major strategic initiatives that the company wants to put in place for us to grow and to also reduce risk. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned uh, that subscription model. We, I'm sure you guys are seeing it too. It's not just uh, technology companies that are trying to adopt this whole subscription model. It's it's every type of company out there is is trying to introduce that into their um, their revenue model so that it it can become consistent. And these brick and mortars uh, type companies that that we're working with that you would never thought. Would would want to automate this uh, this whole process, whether it's uh, commissions or in, in your world um, CPQ, which we partner with nicely. Um, I'm wondering if you're seeing that as well. Gosh, personally, a hundred percent. I mean, I can't tell you how many subscription boxes I have for a two year old. I mean, I get two every few months. I was just got I just got tagged on Instagram about another like here you can get this box of clothes curated for you every three months. I mean, it's but you look at companies like Stitch Fix, right? That yes. that is a subscription. There's there are physical goods that that can manifest in subscription, and I yeah. think you're right. It's about the predictability of that revenue stream. You know, from a yeah. from a cash flow as as well as, you know, when you're planning on your hiring, like you, you know, where you, you can really look out, you know, one, two, three years and see where you're going and make choices today based on that. Yeah. I mean, you know, at the beginning of the year, you know, what 85% of our revenue that's going to happen. So we just need to get really good at forecasting that other 15%. So if you know the top line, you know, your bottom line, like you can figure out the math in between. Yeah. yeah. Tremendously successful for Salesforce, obviously. And yeah. When you think about it, it just popped in my head wine. Like wine is like the the wine clubs are like the first subscription that I had 20 years ago. It's so funny. I had that same exact thought, but I wasn't gonna I was gonna ask you the question of hey, if you got what's your favorite subscription out there? And in my <laughs> mind, the first thing that popped to me is like, hey, I, I love just receiving a, a box of uh, of wine and and yeah. being able to it just it shows up, you don't have to go to the store, but you're right. That was probably one of the early, early inventions, right? hundred percent. I now have a well, whole new customer base to go after. Yeah. On that topic, if you do uh, enjoy wine, what is your favorite wines these days? Type of wine. You don't have to go label. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, I have been a diehard Sauvignon Blanc fan for all, as long as YouTube have known me until yeah. uh, I was pregnant and it just didn't taste good. Maybe because I was pregnant, shouldn't be having wine, but rosé, <laughs> I switched and I am like a hand diehard rosé fan now and champagne uh, always good. 
Well, Scott, being a, a living in Europe for a while, probably knows uh, some good rosés. Yeah, but I was more, I, I'd, go, I'd go more like Sancerre, uh, you know, like a French Sauvignon Blanc or something like that. Um, still a big fan of those, but, you know, nothing like a nice bottle of red. When, when they... Nice. Well, I've, um, I'm, I've switched over to Pinot, and I'll put in a plug for our CEO, which is always good, uh, Cabrera Sellers. He's, uh, he's gone into a, a little side hustle or uh, side passion, let's call it, um, uh, and has a, a wonderful Pinot uh, that, that's out there. But it, that's, uh, that's one of my faves. Monterey County, something like that. It is. Nice. Uh, you've tried it, haven't you? It's nice. Yeah, it's excellent. Well, as we um, as we close out, I'd, I'd love to know, um, you guys have been uh, wonderful uh, professionals and been very successful in your careers, obviously at Salesforce. And I know you've worked at, at, at other places as well. But as you've seen your personal growth, if you had a piece of advice you'd give your younger self, what would that be? I think stay true to yourself and be authentic. Um, and I, I, I had a moment in time, maybe 10 plus years ago, when, when somebody told me, you know, not to be, not to be so emotive, not to be so me, I think. And yeah. I tried for a couple of months and I was miserable. And I realized like, just be yourself and bring your, bring your, yourself to work and be authentic and, and, you know, stay true to yourself. I think that's, that's the number one thing for me. Yeah. Um, I love, I love that. I think that's, that's spot on, but I'm going to also throw something out there is have fun. Cause if you're not say that. that was my other one, Scott, you stole it. <laughs> I love it. This is why you know, we've worked so well together. Like, you know, having fun is, uh, so key because i mean you're you're in in this with colleagues that you know you got to build relationships and having fun is a good way to build that you know trust with one another but also uh you know it, it makes the days that much better right so yeah yeah we, we, we meredith and i had a lot of fun we still do and bernie same with you fortunate for yeah that. No, I uh, I totally agree. I mean, I, I think uh, we're three peas in a pod. Uh, mine would be, um, if I had to think about it, I have two, um, is don't take yourself serious, too serious, right? I think too many people, and, and it might tie into what you were told, Meredith, as some advice of, um, uh, of trying to be too corporate or trying to be right all the time. It, it just doesn't work that way. So it's, don't take yourself serious. Laugh at yourself. I think people find a lot of um, connection when that happens. Uh, and so I think all three of us have a similar outlook on life, which is why we get along so great. Mm -hmm. Sometimes feel like I have a Salesforce badge because I, when I'm visiting you guys, either as a partner or a customer, it feels very comfortable. You're, you've, you've been able to build such a great culture that I think is very similar to the exactly culture. And I think customers and prospects that are out there, um, I know we were talking about, um, you know, revenue operations, but when it comes to just managing your day-to-day -day career and managing, uh, having uh, a great culture in a company, I don't think you can pick two better companies than exactly in Salesforce when it comes to really showing an importance to culture, which then ends up showing for how you service your customer, how you service your partners, and just how people enjoy their their day-to-day um, -day activities. The second one is I would have invested in Salesforce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah day one out of the out of the shoot but excellent well i really appreciate your guys's time today um i can't wait to actually get together and, and break some bread whether it's over lunch or dinner here uh, very soon california is finally loosening up so i think we're going to get that uh opportunity um sooner than we think can't wait bernie i look forward right. to it all right. I just want to thank everybody for, for joining us today. And I want to thank Meredith and Scott for taking the time to have this conversation with us. Enjoy the rest of your day in the sessions that we have planned. Thank you.